So just like stable diffusion, uh, there is yet another language model developed by OpenAI. It's the advanced version of GPT-3, which is generative pre-trained transformer and can generate images from text in a similar way as text to image generation or text to text generation. DALI 2 can generate images from textual prompts. So as a two story, for example, you put in a prompt like a two story pink house with a white fence and a red door it will generate an image of a house that matches this description. Now, uh, let, you know, stepping back and looking at a very, very quick history of DALI 2, it's a follow up to the DALI model, which was developed by OpenAI and was first announced in January 2021. DALI 2 was announced in October 21 as an improved version of the previous model with the larger capacity and fine tuned to generate high quality images. The development of DALI 2 builds on the success of the GPT-3, which is the Generative Pre-trained Transformer 3, and the language models developed by OpenAI. DALI 2 received a lot of attention from media and academics and has been praised for its ability to generate high quality images, almost indistinguishable from those of the real images. The history of DALI 2 is the again just like any other model, DALI 2 is trained on a massive data set and uh, captions from the internet and it can generate images of anything it has seen before. Uh, so how it works is that just similar to stable diffusion, it identifies the properties of the image and then uses those properties in the best of the understanding to build uh, the model itself. While stable diffusion is the open source model, DALI was paid earlier and it is free to use now for a limited set of prompts that you can make to the model. Um, it is said that DALI 2 is a little more accurate than the stable diffusion model per se. That said, let's look at the website. So this is where you need to head to in order to uh, use DALI 2. So you can see there is some high level description on how it works. Photorealistic in the style of Andy Warhol as a pencil. So it's very similar to that of the um, stable diffusion, just that the model is trained on a larger data set and is more, it's more likely to be monetized in the future. Now that ha Microsoft has a huge stake in uh, OpenAI, it's very likely that this model will be monetized in the future. So for the signing up, similar, just sign up. Once you create an account, you will be landed on the screen. Easily make real estate edits to images create different variations of an image inspired by original click on continue we get 50 free credits during the first month and 15 after that so this is why most people use stable diffusion today because it's paid because it's free and DALI uh, is paid it only offers you limited amount of credits to free. that said now that you understand how prompts work let's ensure that we use prompts in the uh, correct way right so I am going to use this one of the major benefits of using DALI 2 is also that it is uh, you know using OpenAI's GPT uh, sorry OpenAI's GPUs meaning you don't have to invest a lot of money um, on your personal computer in order to generate these images while for stable diffusion if you run it on the open system uh, on your own system it's going to cost you um, you know expensive setup relatively expensive setup compared to when you do it using say the google collab or the online version of stable diffusion that we went through okay so this is the prompt we put in so you see this is how it generates it's very simple you have history, you have collections. You can generate a random image by clicking on surprise me. You can upload an image and then generate a subsequent image. So you, let's see if we can download this image. You can also generate the variations of this image or edit this image, right? So let's try that. For now, let's just see if we can upload an image. Okay, I chose the image, don't upload it without consent. Okay, continue. Now you can use this image and generate the variations of the image itself. This is image to image generation that we spoke about earlier in stable diffusion. Um, 
this is something that DALI offers you as well. So now you can generate the image. We'll also walk you through how inpainting and outpainting works. So it looks like there's an option to edit image. So you're going to use that. I hope you understand what inpainting, outpainting, image to image, all of this means now, right? So it generated a bunch of uh, samples. Let's try some other prompts. So this was the original one, and these are the variations that were generated. Let's try something else. Let's generate this. So all of these prompts, um, I'm going to add links in the relevant chapters. Uh, so you can go ahead and take a look at this as well. OK, looks like really cool representation of Walter White. Let's take generate variations of this. This is one of the good things about using DALI that it wouldn't take you as long as it would take to take for stable diffusion to generate your images especially in the offline version while you can use it for whatever amount of time it will still uh, consume a lot of your internal GPU resources let's use this and edit so let's this is again a new feature of DALI UI where okay how do I I've not used this before so I hope I am doing it fine. So the idea is that <coughs> should be able to okay sure it says add generation frame okay let's see what happens basically you added an extra frame you're saying that generate sunflowers in that frame so what it's doing, it's looking at whatever context it has from the image and it's generating the prompt that you put it in the query, right? So amazing. Okay, let's accept this and add a bunch of see the original image wasn't as much impacted, but this while this may seem a bit odd. The image overall seems alike. Okay, interesting stuff. It also offers you variations by the way, so I'll show you what I mean. Okay, let's do cyborg. This is also called the unlimited expansion where you can keep adding extra frames in the image and it will automatically keep generating variation so let's there's an element of cyborg you can look through the variations except whatever works mm. yeah there's also a component of eraser but if you don't want something you can erase it off of the frame let's see what happens when you do upload image okay so this is like a image editing area okay see so, yeah, i mean seems like a playground of sorts where you can unlimited expand the image add certain elements to the image without actually impacting the original image okay let's go back to the screen let's try generating one more image and Try this pixel art style. So, so I've personally noticed that the results that come out of Dallas OpenAI are you know more realistic compared to those of stable diffusion. And this primarily happens because we don't prompt too well in stable diffusion while DALI has a more accurate system when it comes to prompting. If you learn how to do prompts really well, I think you can generate real good um, you know, prompts in Stable Diffusion too. Over the next project that will come in this course, what I'll teach you is how you can generate avatars using um, Stable Diffusion 
and I'm going to also walk you through a resource library where you can find really good prompts to generate your avatars or prompts in general, right? So let's try this. generated something it's not perfect you notice that the previous one wasn't allowed this was primarily because there may have been certain uh, you know issues with respect to content policy now while DALI has um, image moderation text moderation in place stable diffusion does not necessarily have all of that which is why I think there is also a legal issue going on with stable diffusion right now Let's see where that goes. Either way, let's wait for it to generate this prompt. Okay. Looks like it's doing pretty decent job. What I don't feel happy with is the fact that it didn't take blue, but then again, I did not keep it in the frame. So if this blue was in the frame, then my assumption is it would have taken that into consideration. So whatever is in the frame, We'll take that into consideration and build the model around it. So yeah, I mean, this is pretty much all you wanted to uh, know with respect to generating images. I don't see the option to in-paint certain images. Oh, no, no, I think it depends on the area you select, right? So if you remove all of these sections, you're effectively doing the in-painting in the image. But if you remove this section, you're doing the out painting in the image so this is again a great ui um, for you to play around if you're not comfortable running stable diffusion per se you can use this there's also an api that openai offers in case you're a developer or looking to provide uh, text to image services you can use their api and do the same thing i think all of these things that they have on the ui able to also do that via the API so you can check the documentation out and I think that's more or less going to be it for this section let's move on to the next uh, section where we talk about text to image use cases and how you can leverage these use cases in order to improve your uh, accuracy or automate a lot of day-to-day -day things that you do uh, on the product itself See you in the next week. See you in the next lecture.